bibliophile. Noun. One who is attracted to intelligence. Join us, fellow fun-loving lover of knowledge, as we dig into your favorite topics with our very own nerdy diatribes, words of wisdom, and takes on life as millennials. Welcome to the Sapio Files. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome back. I get to be here live with Chelsea another week. So much fun when she stays here. It is. So, welcome back. Today, we wanted to talk about some of those tough little little gender stereotypes. (laughs) And we're not going to be man-hating. That's not what this is. No, we are not about that, especially since both of us are sisters to brothers Mm -hmm. and know a number of wonderful men. Yes. So we're going to talk to you today about some gender stereotypes. Now, we both happen to be fabulous women. Yes, we do. But for the men out there, this is also for you. Yes, because cannot, in good faith or in an intellectual way, talk about gender stereotypes without also including the other side of the way. Yes. So, how about first? Many people are very polarized on this term. They either love it and wear it as a banner, or they use it as a dirty word. Oh, hey, Charles, are you talking about feminism? I am, Kayla. What is feminism to you? So, feminism to me is not a dirty word. Mm -mm. It does not mean that I go around with a t-shirt that says, I hate men on it, and run around screaming about how... Oh, that's a great Cold Porter song, I Hate Men from Kissing Me. Yes, yes it is. What it means to me is that I have or should have the same right as a human, as another human, and that my thoughts, values, opinions, actions are just as important as the other human. And when I say other human, I mean men. So I value and I think men and men's opinions and thoughts and actions and values should hold the same weight. That's what I believe how it is, it is for me. Yeah, I believe if I put in a certain amount of work and I get the same outcome as my colleague who was a man, that we should be given the same amount of respect and admiration for that work. Absolutely. Feminism to me means that everyone, men and women, are treated the same way by society. Yes. And that goes both ways. That's not just talking about you know, pay gap or all of that stuff. It goes both ways. There are definitely female privileges that men don't have. Absolutely. So to me, feminism means own yourself as a strong woman and be equal, not better, equal to the men out there. And overall, our society is doing a pretty good job lately at improving this. But there's certainly a ways that we have to go still, even in this day and age. Right, we've taken so many steps. We have. We're not wearing post-its anymore. Looking back historically, we're no longer treated as property. We aren't the same value as two horses and a pig. We can vote. So, I mean, historically speaking, we have made huge strides. But I still feel there's so much more work to be done. And Chelsea's absolutely right. There have been major improvements, and there's been a lot of movements recently especially by the young population, that have shown just how important it is that we take the derogatory nature out of feminism, because it's not derogatory, and just see it for what it is, which is we want to be equals. Right. And I see how some people would take it in the other sense, so, Mm -hmm. you know, to address all sides of this. Um, We're not just going to pick one side and say, you're right, you're wrong. To address all sides of this. Sure, I understand how people who take it to an extreme of man-hating and let's kill all the men and we're going to take over the world and be better than the men, I totally get why that's offensive to people. And that just won't work. It won't work. It will not work. And so people who see feminism in that light, I understand why maybe you are against it or you wouldn't feel that that would be something you would support or believe in. And for some of these people, maybe you met someone in your life who was that type of quote-unquote feminist. Quote-unquote feminist. And if that's the only life experiences 
or claimed experience that you've had with someone who claimed to be a feminist, then I can empathize with why you would feel that way. However, we're here to tell you that that is not the true nature of feminism, and we hope that by listening to this, you take the time to think about what it means to be a feminist and maybe just see it as being an equal rights person. Absolutely. So I think that when you talk about let's treat people equally, that also includes the acceptance of different gender norms that might not be what you typically perceive as a masculine thing or a feminine thing. Right. Accepting people as people, not because of their gender. So traditionally, feminine things are seen as like the softer, um, more submissive. Well, even in a positive light, I wasn't even, I was going to say like things like sweet, creative, Oh, bubbly, yes. energetic, that kind of personality. I mean, yes, in history, yeah, there's the submissive, the property, all of that. But just in today's society, like what girly stuff is seen as is... Sugar and spice and everything else. Yeah, so like the sweet, um, happy, bubbly, energetic type of personality is seen as female. Also, the emotional types of personalities are seen as more female. Right. So women are able to express their emotions publicly much more readily than men can, which is unfortunate because everyone has emotions. On the flip side, masculine things are typically seen as strong, independent, tough. Um, it could be like athletic that's right. seen as a more masculine right. thing. Um, you know, why is it called a tomboy if a girl is into athletics? <laughs> like, you know, maybe she's just good at sports. So the more dominating, strong, intellectual yes, types true, of right. people are considered more masculine. But we all know that people are not necessarily neatly in those packages. So whether you are male or female, it is acceptable to be who you are. And being who you are, whatever that is, is important. And I don't know about you, but I know there's a lot of men who feel like they're afraid to show emotion because it makes them weak in their eyes. I don't know. I tend to respect men who show emotion so much because I, it, it makes them more real to me. I, I also respect men who show emotion. And um, just to make sure that I'm being completely clear with all of our listeners, I'm actually the opposite in some ways. I'm a woman who I, I deeply feel things, but I don't often show my emotions. Right. And... So I can really sympathize with that guy who sometimes gets torn apart for feeling his emotions, which is a completely human thing to do, and 100% okay if that's who you are. Um, and because I get torn apart the other direction, people say I'm cold and not feeling. Because, because you're a girl and you don't cry? Because I'm a girl and I don't cry. <laughs> but I do cry. It's just Occasionally. It's, more, it, it, it's usually in a really, really deeply powerful one of them. Right. Sharing some type of emotion. I, I get upset and I get... I cry sad. much more easily than you. <laughs> I'm, I'm emotional, but not, not in a bad way. I'm just... No. I feel things deeply. I'm empathic. And I, I'm more of the crier. She, I'm, she's I'm more of the struggle. I'm of runs. If I'm stressed over angry or sad, I mm -hmm. run. You do. Runs, yeah. She does run. The other thing that she does is if I'm sad, she'll usually just, like, give me some kind of beverage. I do. I... I'm definitely a hot beverages type of person. Shelton Cooper. I, I didn't even know that. So if you watch Big Bang Theory, one of the things that one of the characters Shelton Cooper does is when someone's upset, he just kind of says, they're there and gives them a hot beverage because that's what he was taught to do by his mom and dad. And I just do that because everybody deserves a hot chocolate or a coffee or a tea when they're upset. Yes. <laughs> it just makes sense to me. I remember one time in college, I was home for like winter break or something and I was upset about something. I don't know what I was upset mm -hmm. about. And my mom was like, what do you want? What can I help you with? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I need hot chocolate. And she's like, hot chocolate. I'm, and I'm like, yeah, Kayla gives me hot chocolate when I cry. <laughs> so I needed the hot chocolate because I didn't have Kayla to give me the hot chocolate. But, Anyway, we digress. Basically, the point is that we need to be able to accept a variety of people. So the more emotional, 
sensitive, artistic, creative men, that's fantastic. The more tough, sporty, intellectual, strong, independent women, that's awesome too. And if you happen to be the the norm or like yes. the stereotypical norm, I'll say, because there's no norm for all any of this. We're all so different and so incredibly diverse that there's no norm for this. But if you do happen to fall under one of the stereotypes and you are a more feminine, soft, emotional woman or a more masculine, very like um uh, like athletic, sporty, very, very alpha male alpha male man, then that's okay too. Because there's nothing wrong with that, because that's who you are. Right. So we were actually listening to oh, yes. another podcast uh, the other day. Right. Oh, and there was this woman on here, and I don't know her name, and I'm not going to mention her name because, you know, we're not going to call people up. But there's this woman on there who was talking, it was like a dating advice podcast, because sometimes those are entertaining, and you listen to them for laughs and right. things like that. Absolutely. So it was like a dating advice podcast. And there was this woman who was on there that was like giving someone a piece, giving a woman a piece of advice that, oh, well, see, the reason you have trouble with men is that you're independent. You're too strong and men don't like you to be strong. You're too alpha. And the man wants to be the alpha. So because you're so alpha, you should pretend to be beta to get the right guy for you. And okay, here's what I have to say to that. So much. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll so dissect much. it in a second. Now, all right. There are certainly men out there who prefer to be alpha because that is their nature. But there are also men who are very into the strong, independent woman. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I know a lot of them. I've met a lot right. of them. So the right person for you does not require you to change yourself. And that's what I thought was so ridiculous about this. Because she was like, no, you want the right one for you. So you have to be submissive to him. And that's not a thing. If the, if you're a strong, independent woman, the right guy for you is someone who appreciates that and matches it and challenges it. Not somebody who says, you're too much, you need to stop. Absolutely. And Chelsea and I were taking a walk earlier today. And I was telling her that, ask, that a dating advisor asking someone to change their personality from one of being independent and strong to being more submissive and um, taciturn is like someone saying, okay, so if you want to get a husband and your husband really likes people that like apples, but you don't like apples, you like peaches, you need to pretend that you like apples. And then you're eating apples the rest of your life and you don't like apples. So you're going to be in a terrible relationship. It's not, it's not the relationship that you want if that's what the person really requires of you. And you know what? The other way is good, too. If you happen to be someone who is more, like, sweet, quiet, introverted, and you enjoy having a stronger support system, having the person that you're with be more of the alpha, then great. That works, too. But you should never have to change what you really are to get the right person for you. And it's not even just a male-female dynamic. Because, you know, we... We were talking about, you know, a couple podcasts ago, we were talking about like, you know, same sex relationships. The same thing is, works there. And they were talking about that question. Like everyone asks who's the man and who's the woman. See, that question right there (laughs) is asking you who's alpha and who's beta. And that's not necessarily healthy. There doesn't even need to be an alpha and a beta. There could be, be there could be alpha beta. There could be equals. There could be a dynamic where you switch who's alpha depending on the needs. Right. But you want to find who's a good fit for you, not who sees you as this perfect little submissive woman if you're a woman or this big, strong man if you're a man because they need to see you as the real you. I like to think about it as your relationship is going to be kind of like an escape room at times. I love escape rooms. So for me, I, I do like being a leader and like taking charge and everything. And there are some things that I'm very good at in escape room. I'm good at wriggles. I'm good at like seeing things you are. that are hidden that other people might not see. But then there are some things that just are not my strength. So I will put myself in a bigger role on purpose. There's a math problem. Yeah. I'll be like, no, you you got this. Way to go. So I feel like really should be more like that. It shouldn't just be this. Switching. I'm the alpha. I'm the beta. It should be who's going to be the strong person in this particular instance and it should be a balancing act. Yeah. Personally, that's, you know, what I like to find in relationships, somebody who can support you and challenge you, 
Um, but sometimes they'll take a stronger role and sometimes they'll let you take a stronger role. It depends mm-hmm. on the situation and the person. And right. I think that's important, but Absolutely. that could be my preference. Yes. So this was our, our rant about this podcast we were listening to about how women need to make themselves more submissive. I was looking for your phone. To catch a man. Oh, yeah. I, I was outright. So, but there is this weird dynamic of the differences in what genders are expected to do and what mm-hmm. they're not. So we thought we would go from the opposite perspective today. Yes. I mean, obviously people talk more often about when they talk about gender equality, they talk about the ways that women do not have the same benefits as men. That's, that's the one that's most readily talked about, but, and yes, we're not going to downplay that. This yeah. is just either way. Okay. Yeah, I know. I mean, and we'll talk about that too, yeah. but we wanted to point out that because of these gender norms, there are things that we can do as women that men cannot get away with. It's true. And I, I'd be lying if I said I didn't know this and occasionally use it to my advantage. I oh, mean, I, I, all women seem to do that, but it's something that we have to take from both sides because equality doesn't go just one way. It goes the other way. There are, there are things that people get put into a box just because they're a white male and people don't appreciate that. So... Here are some benefits that women have based on the gender norms. Number one, the biggie. Yes. So when I go out on a date, in most cases, I never have to pay for it. Neither do I. And this is just the cultural norm. Men tend to offer to or like to pay for dates, at least in the early phases. Though I do offer. I, always I have always, offer. I've always offered as well. Yeah. Um, there have not been very many dates at all, unless it was something like they paid in advance or I didn't see the bill or something. Right. There have not been many dates at all where I didn't offer, like, can I help you out? Usually, especially early on, they will say no. Or occasionally. I'm, I'm so stubborn. I'm such a pain in the butt. You're stubborn? Guys. So yeah. they'll say no. And I'll say, okay, can I get dessert then, please? Or mm-hmm. can I pay for the tip? Well, because yeah, and I'll, yes. and I'll do that sometimes. Like, I'll buy I'll buy movie tickets. They can buy dinner, something like that. Mm-hmm. But I appreciate it as a nice gesture. I do, because it's them saying that they appreciated the time with you and that. Oh, I deeply So I definitely, so men, I mean, it is definitely something that women, or at least us, appreciate yes. and don't thank take for granted. For so thank you. But the cultural norm that the man always has to pay, like, what if the woman makes more money? I was going to say that there are many cases in today's society where maybe the woman makes more money. Or what if the man is going through a financial hardship right now? Should he not be able to date anyone right. without feeling like he's less of a man? So that's the first one, and that's a biggie because that's pervasive in our culture today. It's it's a nice gesture. It's not, it's not really a problem. It's not something that like as a woman, I'm going to complain about, but it is something that I don't necessarily feel. I feel like it's a a hangover from an earlier time period when men were the only ones who had money. Right. So now that there is much more opportunity for men and women to be making good money, it's not necessarily societally appropriate any longer, although it is still a kind and appreciative gesture. Right. I mean, see, on the flip side, if I were to go on like a first date, not necessarily like somebody I've been dating a while, right? but if I were to go on a first date and the guy didn't offer to pay, I might think he didn't like me because of how society is. And I, I hate that that's kind of true, but if a guy does not offer to pay on the first date, I kind of overthink it because it's just so common for them to do so. I feel like I've never actually tested that out because I've always offered to pay at the same time. I have to yeah. and say, can we split the bill? I'm yeah. totally fine with that. Mm-hmm. If it's like a first coffee date or something like that. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's weird. It makes me think about, like, did they not think it was a date? Okay. Hmm. Just because it's how... It's what I'm used to. Like, even right. people that I dated for a longer period of time and eventually split everything with, or even covered them on certain occasions when, you know, I felt like I had more money or I had something that I wanted to give to them. Right. 
the first time they pretty much always offer. I don't think I've ever been on a first date where they didn't, but I, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. Only at the very beginning though, like when you're dating someone for a longer time, if they want to split the bill or they ask if you can cover something, that's not an issue to me. Right. All right. So we've been on this topic for a little while. So number two, number two of benefits women have. So I'm going to preface this with, of course, it is never okay to hit anyone. Just no. don't hit people. That said, in altercation, one of the most vivid movie memories I have of the notebook is when Allie is hitting Noah over and over again, he starts hitting himself because he knows he can't hit her. Um, and while I would never say to anyone you should hit to solve a problem on either end, if a woman hits a man, it's a lot less frowned upon than when a man hits a woman. Yes. So. And again, physical violence is not something we're condoning in any way, shape, or form. But the whole, I can't hit a girl, but I can beat up my guy friend. Right. Is a weird thing. There was actually, if anybody watches um, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, which is hysterical, I would actually really suggest watching it if you haven't. It is a very socially aware dramedy that is done as a musical. So there are musical numbers in every episode because the woman who um, is the main character is dealing with certain mental conditions and the way that she sees the world is in a series of musical numbers. So when she's going through something emotional, it comes out as a musical number. So there was this song in one of them where she's tangoing with, I think it's like her ex-boyfriend at the time and they're they're angry at each other, but they still like each other. And it's this weird tango dance. Mm -hmm. And so at one point she's in the song, she slaps him across the face. It's not like a big physical violence thing. She just like slaps him. And I remember there's like a pause in the song. And the next line was like, I cannot hit you back because (laughs) you are a lady. (laughs) And then, then her next line was just like, that clearly is a double standard. (laughs) But yes, like, of course that's, we're not condoning hitting on any friend, but the fact that you you could be, you know, worst case scenario, you could be a husband in an abusive relationship with a wife who's abusive physically, and people would still be like, are you serious? Even if it was the case. People don't always believe it in that, yeah. in that way. Like, people think that, there's some people who still think that, like, men can't be raped, which is absurd. No. That, and it's, it's not ever okay to do that to a man or a woman. Again, equality. It's not okay to do it to anyone, people. Yeah, so that kind of thing, if it's not okay to hit a girl, why is it okay to hit a guy? Right. Anyway, so that's that one. Um, We talked a little bit about this one before, but the ability to show emotion without being seen as weak. So a woman would be socially allowed to cry in front of friends. Right. A man, maybe not. And I was actually, so you, you did your show reference and everything. Yeah. And so I am currently binging Pretty Little Liars on Netflix. It is actually exceptionally good. And my favorite couple is the couple that they have some ups and downs, but they're both equally strong in different ways. He's much more of like the athletic protector type person, he has a a police officer, and she's very brainy and intellectual. But both of them, what I love about them is that they are willing to be emotional with one another, but people have actually criticized the relationship because the male character is someone who actually sheds tears. And they both get emotional, and he's never overly emotional in my opinion, but it's when emotion is needed or it's called for, it makes sense, and it really bothers me that people are thrown by these people. No, and why do we think less of men who show emotion? Right. Men have emotion. Like, do we think they're robots and they don't feel anything? Men have emotions. And Spencer and Toby forever. Sorry to say about that. All right. (laughs) So the showing emotion one, that's another benefit that we have as women. But that's one is kind of just silly. Oh, yeah. But it's it's so so true and it works. Yeah. Yeah. So. So we did it in a picture. Okay, so, you know, you have a group of friends at a bar. Yeah, and you're all just hanging out, 
and you decide that you want to get a round of drinks. Mm -hmm. So first you send the guy to the bar and it takes, it takes, it takes him like 40 minutes. People keep coming in front of him. The bartender's not seeing him. It takes him a long time to get a drink. And then you send your bestie up. And she's wearing a really, really pretty red dress. And my hair is done like nice and everything. And she just gives him that look. The bartender look. Just makes eye contact with the bartender. Maybe leans over the bar. Mm-hmm. And then immediately. It's Five minutes, your round of drinks is there. Oh, yeah. So. And yours is probably free. It probably so, is. So, so. How often have you gotten a free drink from a bartender? At least every bar I go to. Uh-huh. So. so it, that's a double standard as well, because even if you're an attractive man, and, like, I don't want to say it's an attractiveness thing, because, I mean, it is, but it's more attractiveness of females. The person with the biggest boobs gets served the fastest. And I hate to say that, but it's true. Um, so, we have that benefit. Also, like, we have the ability to, like, flirt to get out of tickets. Yes. Things like that. Because the society is just very centered on focusing on female attractiveness more so than male attractiveness. Mm -hmm. And this one in particular is one that I feel could leave a lot of questions unanswered for that argument as to, I've had a lot of men come up to me and say, well, why can't, why is it okay for you know, a bartender to look at your breasts if you're leaning over a counter to get a free drink, but then it's not okay for someone else to make a comment about that. Oh, when I have, a, I can't yeah, so, that. And of course, like, and there's no difference between comment and look. That that is a big difference. Like the thing with the bartenders is they're not usually saying like, "Hey, nice tits, here's a drink." <laughs> They might notice and serve you first because of that, but if they're commenting on it, that's still inappropriate. Right. So, and that goes for in life. You know what? People notice attractive people. They just do. I notice attractive men. I notice attractive men all the time. That doesn't mean I leer at them and make comments. That doesn't mean, like, excuse my language, that every attractive guy is see, I say, hey, nice ass, bro. Like, it's it's not something that people, it's not something that a lot of women do. Some women do, but it's just not something that I do. Especially like if I think that I mean, like if I was dating a guy and it was in like a hey, you look hot. Well, okay, to people you're dating, that's totally different because there's already an understanding of that you're attracted to each other. So if there's no understanding that you're attracted to each other, then it's 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 not appropriate. Yeah, it's inappropriate. Whether you're a girl saying it to a guy or a girl. Or a guy saying it's a girl. Or a guy or a murder. Or a yeah, any, anybody. And, and it's not saying it's anybody. Like, if you're calling someone out on something and they haven't showed a certain number or amount of interest in you at all, and you're just calling them out based on a pure physical thing, I'm like, can you get a, like, more lowest common denominator, sir? Right. By the way, I will not date you if you do that to me. Just saying. No. Like, you can only comment on my body after there's been, like, a mutual understanding of mutual attraction. <laughs> and even then, if most of what you do is comment on my body, then I'm, still then I'm not that interested. That I mean, like, you, you can, like, if we're already dating, like, you can say things occasionally. But right. if that's, the, that's your focus, then that's not a good thing either. I feel like it's just implied. If you're listening to the podcast called The Stadio Files, you you're probably that smart. That you're smart. So it's implied that there are certain things, like, consent and, you know, violence, whether it be physical, emotional, or um, psychological, like, we're not okay with that. Um, yes. But it is, yes, it is easier for me to get a waiter's attention. And that's, and I feel like as a, as a group, and I grew up with some really high class students, I have to say. My guy yeah. friends growing up, and my brother, like, I, I did as well. Like, awesome. But even so, my general state of I guess inner monologue is am I always doing something that will keep me safe? Yeah. If I'm in a bar or walking the street or, you know, like am I going to get someone yelling something at me? Like I just know it's called possibility. It happens. Yeah. Yeah, I had to do that either guys. There was a custodian at work who like stopped me and he's like, You're distracting me and I'm like, I'm sorry. He's like, Yeah, with that green dress you're distracting me. And I was like, I'm at work. 
I literally was walking to the cafeteria to get a coffee. I'm distracting you with my green dress. Like you. So I tell you about. It wasn't. It wasn't a slutty dress. It was a work dress. Like I was wearing it to work. So I tell you about my homeless hero in New York this winter. I don't think so. Tell so, our, Tell all of our so friends. So I. I tend to carry one dollar bills, quarters, and stuff with me in my pockets when I'm in New York City, just because if I see someone on the streets, especially in the winter time, I'll either buy them a hot chocolate and give it to them so they have something warm to drink, or I'll buy them a bottle of water if it's summertime it's really hot, or I'll throw a dollar in their their jar if they're homeless on the streets. Um, and I just I, I can't help it. And I did this. Walking past on the way to, I was actually going to model for Smart Glamour. Mm-hmm. Um, Smart Glamour is a good company, actually. We should plug them company. really quickly. Um, one woman show based out of New York, she creates sizes extra to small, all the way to 6X, all customizable. Um, she is a champion for style and size, for fit for everybody, and that all bodies are real bodies. So, actually, my distracting green dress was a Smart Glamour dress. Oh. Well, yes, um, it's, it's really not distracting. It's nice, but it's not distracting. So I was probably a model for my friend Mallory, who is the um, creator and owner of Smart Glamour. And I put a dollar bill and gave a guy a coffee on the street. He was mm-hmm. right here where I parked. Um, and then I did my modeling. I came back and um, walking past the same area where I parked. And keep in mind, it's winter, so it's cold. Yeah. I'm in leggings and boots. In a long jacket, like, I am not in any way, like, people say, I never ask them because of how they dress. Like, I am dressed to the point that, like, I am more. Like, that is how I was dressed. And I have a guy being like, hey, baby, why don't you come over here and show me some of that? And the homeless person that I gave coffee to yelled at him and stuck up for me. Excellent. Like hero. So, I'm just saying. Snaps for homeless hero. That's should be. Everybody knows that the station because you never know where you're going to have someone do something really heroic, even if you think that, you, that in their position they never could be. And it was just so nice to have someone defend me that I didn't have to yell back something like I always have to do. So, well, and even on that note, the fact that that's such a common thing that people do yell at at women. I mean, and probably at men some sometimes as well. But that's you know that goes that brings us into the whole. Yeah. That's a bigger topic. That's the whole Me Too thing. Yeah. Um, but it's un- un- that's unfortunately such a real name for that because mm-hmm. I I can't think of any women that I know who not necessarily assaulted, but who haven't at least been harassed at some point. And it's unfortunate that that's the case. But at the same time, I know there are so many good men out there and good men. Here's a call to you guys. Stick up for the women in your life. If you hear a guy saying something inappropriate or making someone uncomfortable, tell him it's not cool. Because we know that you're out there, good men, and we know a lot of you. We're, we have a we have a lot of good friends that right. are good men. So, and I think that's something that you know, good men. That's what you can do to help, and that is an amazing thing. Right, and the truth of the matter is, it's not enough to just comment on someone's status and say, well, I'm a good man. It, it needs action. Yeah. Anybody that is speaking on behalf of someone else who needs their help has to show it through their actions, not yeah. just their words. So, um, and also, you know, it's, I guess it's a little less common, but if you see a man being harassed, same thing. Stick up for them. Yeah. In general, if you see someone in an uncomfortable position where someone is bullying someone else, for any reason, whether it's based on their gender, sexual orientation, um, ethnicity, color, then defend that person. Yeah. Just, it's the right thing to do. And I know we're saying this is a call to the good men, but it's also a call to women. It's a call to everybody. Everybody, good people. Yeah. Because that brings us back to gender equality. Good people defend other people. When you mm-hmm. see another person getting harassed, then a good person would stop it from happening. So, I mean... Really, what is harassment other than another one bullying? It's it is. So and you know what? That homeless guy in Bryant Park. I bought him a cocoa, and he remembered me, and he defended me. Yeah, like that's you know everybody's attracted to people at some point randomly. Everyone, men, women, everyone. But that doesn't mean you have to yell to them about it. Mm-hmm. If you're attracted to somebody and you want to talk to them, say hi. What's your name? Nice to meet you. Mm-hmm. Really, it works. 
that that's just so much more effective than screaming like, hey, nice tits. Because, I mean, if someone screamed that at me, I would walk away quickly from them. If that same person had thought that in their head, but then said, you know what, maybe I should talk to her first. Yeah. They at least had a first date. Absolutely. So. Yeah, there's no shame in thinking things about other people. We all do it. We all look at people and are like, wow, that person's really attractive. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that the kind of behavior that we see that a lot of times these days is appropriate. So, anyway, <laughs> next part of our little shindig. Oh, this is this is interesting, too. Yes, here we go. Okay. So, have you ever noticed the attractiveness and versus intelligence dynamic that exists with men and women? Oh, you mean how if a man is attractive and, of course, if a man is intelligent, then he's more attractive than a woman is intelligent, and somehow she seems less attractive. It could go that way. It can also go... You can flip the two. So let's do let's do your version first. Okay. So it seemed to be more attractive for men to be intelligent than Correct. for women. I think that goes back to that alpha beta thing where yes. people see it as threatening if the woman is too smart, right. which I don't even think is really that true for the for a lot of people, the good people, because I don't know. I feel like if you're not interested in my brain, like that's my best thing. Like bye boy bye. Um, right. and, and so, yeah, I mean, I feel like it depends on which kind of person you're talking to. So the attractiveness intelligence dynamic that intelligence is seen as a stronger quality in men. The other way to flip this that I was actually thinking about is if a man is attractive and applies for a prestigious position, he is presumed to be more intelligent. If a woman is attractive, and applies for a prestigious position. She is presumed to be less intelligent. That's true. And mm -hmm. has to prove herself. So, for example, so not I'm not going to say I'm not saying who like who is or not is or is not smart. But for example, um, like the former president, correct, uh, Barack Obama was a was an attractive man. Yes. At no point did anybody question whether he was. Intelligent. intellectually capable of that position. Right. They may have questioned his politics. You know, there's always people who are on both sides of the aisles. So we're not talking about whether you agree with his politics, but was he intelligent and capable? Sure. Absolutely. But nobody questioned that. He's an attractive man. He's an intelligent man. Nobody saw them as opposed to each other. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine? Okay, I'm going to use this person as an example. It's a person in history. Can you imagine if Marilyn Monroe ran for president? Marilyn Monroe had an IQ equal to that of Einstein's. But people do not remember her for that. People remember her for her figure. If Marilyn Monroe ran for president, do you really think people wouldn't be questioning whether she was smart enough to do the job, even though her IQ is that high? They wouldn't ask any questions like that. Because she's beautiful, and that's what they see. Mm-hmm. So for women, they have that, that stuff that they have to overcome. Right. And I've actually noticed that it's not just men doing this to women, it's women oh, doing women. this to women. Mm -hmm. I noticed when I was recently out of college and other times that I had been applying for jobs at different places. Now I'm, I'm in education and as a young person, like when I was like 22, 23, you know, young, looking, I, and I've always looked a little younger than I am. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of issues with female principals or female bosses questioning me a lot harder in interviews and making, I felt making assumptions that I wasn't as smart as I was. Right. Male principals didn't do that as much. I've gotten comments like, wow, you're really bold and talk like a man. And this is from women. Wow. This is like, other yeah. women talking to me, or like you said, where I get grilled until they know without a shadow of doubt that I am as smart as and capable as I'm saying that. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel like that doesn't it doesn't happen with men. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. all the time. Yeah, not that it doesn't happen with men, but yes. more, it happens yeah. more with other women. So that's something you know we got to think about as mm -hmm. women. We said this the other when we gave each other awards. You said this about me. Yes. I've certainly been presumed to be less intelligent than I am because I'm blonde. 
Yeah, I feel like going back to both of our wars that sometimes because of stereotypes, you're presumed to be less intelligent and I'm presumed to be more cold hearted. Yes. Mm-hmm. That is totally true. And you're not cold hearted at all. Thank but you. you're not you're very smart. Thank you. You're welcome. So you build each other up. Build each other up. People, not just women, but it's very important to just make sure that we're seeing people for who they are. People, not men, not women, people. Mm-hmm. I guess as a fun conclusion, because I feel like we've been doing these the past few episodes, and they didn't get the fun. Fun conclusions. Fun conclusions. That was redundant. These fun conclusions have been fun. Yes. Are they fun? They're fun they conclusions? Are, they are fun. But they're, they're fun. They're conclusions that are fun. Yes. So they're... In a fun in a fun kind of way? They're concluding statements that are fun in a really, really fun way. In a fun sense of the word. With a fun nature. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so we were thinking that it might be cool to list some strong people that we know, and we can tell you whether or not they're introverts or extroverts, alphas or betas, just so that you get the idea that you don't have to be an alpha to be strong, you don't have to be an introvert, like if introverts are strong too, betas are strong too, alphas can have their weak moments, extroverts can have their moments when they need some space. Okay. It's, yeah. So strong figures that we admire yes. in society. I'm going to say, I mentioned it before, but I freaking love Marilyn Monroe. Mm-hmm. I think that she never got enough credit for how brilliant she was and that had a lot to do with why she had such a hard life. Right. She didn't get credit for, for that, um, but she was an alpha, and that was, in that time period not how people wanted to see her. Mm-hmm. I'd say that, never mind, I'm going to give you two. So the first one everybody kind of understands is the power of Eleanor Roosevelt. Yes. But what people might not know is that Eleanor Roosevelt was incredibly introverted. She was terrified of public speaking. And she really had to work hard to find her voice because she understood that she was in a position where if she didn't speak up for those that needed her, then no one would. So her inspiration to find her voice and get more stage fright was that she knew that she had power to influence change. So she was an introvert who was probably between Alpha and Bailey. Because I feel like FDR and Eleanor had that relationship where they were equally mm-hmm. powerful and um, influential in their relationship. Yeah. But definitely an introvert who saw herself in her young life as a beta, but then grew into her own. And I mean, what I'm sure the world would get to know with most alpha influential and declaration of human rights, anybody? Help me. And the person that JFK in for um, endorsement for presidency, mm-hmm. you might not have gotten that um, nomination mm-hmm. anymore for her. In any case, I'm going to add, so her, then another one I wanted to mention is Harper Lee. And she was a yeah, actress. Yeah. She was someone who, I still don't believe she wrote her second novel, um, the one that was republished. I think it was a draft of the first one. And anybody that's tried yeah, it, Watchmen, it, I do not think a, it was published with her complete consent, and I do not think it was no, a representation. I think it's a draft. But in any case, her release to Kill a Mockingbird, she wrote about a topic that was still largely taboo, especially in the area that she was writing it in. And so even though she was a beta personality and an introverted because of personality, she was reclusive, mm-hmm. she used that power to prevent change. But yeah. that she had, she had the power of her pen and she used that to make to change the world. Absolutely. So yeah. Alright, other strong are we doing women first? We do women. Okay. Okay, let's each do a strong man and then we can do a strong either man or woman. Okay, yeah. Okay. Can strong man. Alright. I'm gonna talk about MLK. Yes. Because he used his softer nature, his Ooh. beta nature, yes. in order to create a nonviolent movement in for something that was very difficult to speak out about at that time, that mm-hmm. was very challenging and that was still not accepted. In the time that he that he was able to speak out about that, that was not a common popular mindset yet it was still the civil rights movement was still very much new and many people did not accept it but whereas some people like more like the black panther movement used violence 
as a way to help um, perpetuate their movement. MLK used his softer beta nature for a great purpose. Mm -hmm. He was able to reach to the hearts and minds of people in a way that didn't require any violence. So I think that's a strong man there who was not the, the stereotypical masculine alpha. He is so strong for being a beta. Yes. That was perfect. Um, along the same routes of civil rights, and I guess also um, both these men were horrifically assassinated, but RFK is one of my favorite men who, like Martin Luther King, used his dynamic personalities. He was more of an extrovert, but he spoke about peace and about acceptance. And he was, for a white Catholic man to talk about civil rights in with the passion and fervor that he spoke about at his time and he was through for it. Yeah. It was unheard of. And I think that he was such a pioneer and in fact he not been killed, he would have been a phenomenal leader. So but he basically put his life on the line to speak up for what he truly believed in. And I think that, that is so admirable and courageous. And okay, so in recent history, not even history, she's very much young and alive. I'm gonna say Emma Watson. Because she not only is someone who is an actress who has a big following for that and is able to reach people with her artistry, mm -hmm. she took that platform and used it to be an ambassador in many different countries mm -hmm. and to speak about this concept of equality. And to go even further... Our definition earlier in the podcast of feminism is very close to what she calls her he for she movement. Yeah, so Emma Watson created a movement called He for She, which is basically just supporting the equality right. of men and women. I guess to kind of connect the dots there, a recent person, um, Patrick Stewart, mm. um, he actually is a phenomenal event. He, he's been on social media. Um, he's been photographed talking about feminism and equal rights movements and other things. And he is just such an advocate for people being treated like people. Yeah. And I adore him. He is, as much as I hate to admit this, having a white man of influence of that age speaking for the opposite sex is such a powerful thing. Just like RFK speaking for Black Americans is a powerful thing. So I just, I adore him. Well, this is also something big to keep in mind. Whatever position of power you have, even if you have 12 positions that put you at a disadvantage, mm -hmm. whatever you have of power, use that for your friends and for people that you come across who maybe don't have it. So if you are... The most obvious version of, you know, the powerful person is like the wealthy white male. Mm -hmm. If you happen to be a wealthy white male, use that. You know, say, hey, I don't like what you're doing to these women. I don't like what you're saying about this race. Uh, I don't like what you're saying about homosexuals. Use your position as a wealthy white male. Now, if you're not a wealthy white male, but you have some sort of position of power. Maybe you are in a job where you have a platform where you can speak. Right. Or maybe you are a strong woman or a, a white a woman. I mean, white Even woman. just as yeah. just white. If you're a white woman. Um, if you are straight, mm -hmm. speak out for the homosexuals. Most people, the majority of you are straight, probably. Right. Although we have a lot of gay friends compared to yeah. the general population. But... Um, that's a that's a position of privilege. Yeah. Any position that you have yeah. that people aren't going to question, anything that people aren't going to look at and think about as part of you is a position of privilege. If you are literate. And so I'm not talking like everybody has to have college education. There are so many different people who have so many multiple intelligences. We've discussed this before. Mm -hmm. I'm talking that there are places that people do not know how to read a sentence. Mm -hmm. If you are literate and can do something, do something. Use that. This got very political and very... But not bad political. No, it just got... Good political. A good discussion of, of some of these political ideas. Right. But um, 
I think that it's important to remember both sides. Actually, we were saying before today that people who don't necessarily fall on the same side of where you are also try to reach out to them and understand them because it may just be part of their past and their history and something that you don't understand and that they don't understand and listening and being open from. Especially if you're in a friendship or acquaintance area with that person, if you do want to change their outlook on something, then yelling at them is not going to do it. No, but talking to them and channeling your inner Martin Luther King and RFK and Eleanor Roosevelt, those movers and shakers who, you know, do so with grace and voice and clarity of mind, that's how you do it. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us today. Thank and you so much. Well, whoever you are, man, woman, white, black, Asian, something else, gay, straight, maybe not a man or a Muslim, woman, Christian, Jewish, Christian, everything, whatever you no. are, whatever you are, own it, embrace it, and be there for people who are things other than you. And be there for those that can't be there for themselves. So that is our gender stereotypes, but general stereotypes, really. Yeah, turn, this, kind of this, general. this turned into general stereotypes. We were thinking of gender stereotypes, but okay. But it was a good conversation. And, um, oh, and I think that's important because gender stereotypes, the way to combat them is to make them general stereotypes. General. Because people... People. When you think of people as people, have a fantastic, fabulous, equal week. Yes, equal week. It's yes. an equal week. Have a wonderful, meet wonderful people. Talk to wonderful people. <laughs> have a nice day and a nice week. See you back on the flip side. <laughs> <laughs>